on today's episode of Bucked Up. Like, you know, at that stage, when those guys drop, like, like, Ka was dropping, Grief and Rock was dropping, like, we loaded Marsburg. There wasn't this fan base. That should have not been, there was none of this. Like, they literally had to start, from, you know, almost nothing. Or almost like, you know, maybe from some what Sean Price left. Yeah, yeah. That's all I need. What's going on? Is the sound all right? Or is it like, should I put in the headphones, you think? No, the sound's fine. If you don't want to wear the headphones, you don't need to wear the headphones. You tell me, man. I mean, can I you hear, Can you hear me? I don't, have, I don't have the earbuds. I even just have like... We always just wear the cable shits, like the old, you know. Does it have the know, microphone? Me, me and Rock get like paranoid about fucking like brain tumors and shit. Like this dude don't ever use the phone like this ever. You will never see him on the phone. Either. It's like oh really? So we, we no, always so you don't use, use anything Bluetooth or anything. We use nah. We never do. Me and him like really never do. We only use like the wired shits. It does seem like shit's being created so fast that we don't know the long term, like ramifications of it. He's always been like that, and I kind of was always like that too. Like I was like, I don't know about all that. Like when dudes would rock the little, like the shit where it curled around your ear and shit, I'd be like, and even back in the day with cell phones, I would be like trying to use speaker. I know, I I know. Back in the day, day though, I was using the cell phone like as a kid, like wow, and like in high school, like. (laughs) You know, but I just had my uh my pediatrician on the podcast. I still go to the same doctor I've had since I was like three years old, and he has to come on the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) And he has to come on, so I was like, "Word, what am I gonna get the time to ask a medical professional about all that shit?" Yeah, yeah. I wonder what he has. No one really knows what's happening. No one knows. It's like the same thing. Is like that's why. I feel like the same reason I almost don't like dab as much as other people or do that shit. Cause I'm like, we all know how long people have been smoking weed. It's been around like all yeah. this new shit. It's like, oh, oh. I mean, not to I was, say that. I was watching some document, I mean, some interview you did. Um, fuck, I'm going to be mad that I forget the kid's name. He's a really good interviewer. Uh, you that, did it through the, Zoom. The, the man, fucking Eric the Young God. Yeah, it's Eric be the that Young one. God. Yes, it was. Dude, he's that's like, dope, that he's was like, dude. yeah, he's so dope. He's literally like, that was probably my favorite interview I ever did. Yeah, no, that was an amazing one. But you were smoking a bong on it. And I was yeah, like, yeah. thank God. No one in the rap world smokes bong. All uh, right, I used to roll around with my, like, I have like a, a bong bag. And it looked like a puffy jacket, and it's literally like stitched like a puffy jacket. And I used to, I used to call it the Bong Claire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, got the Bong I, I was just in New York for the uh, West Side Gun album listening party, oh, and it was at this place called the Gold Room, and everyone was smoking okay. in there. So I run out to my car, and I'm like, "Yo, I'm gonna bring my Bong in." Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. They thought it was a bottle. I got banned from that place for like 15 minutes. I had to talk my way out of being like, oh, no, wow. no, 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 it's not a bottle, it's a bong. So I'm like, maybe Dude, that wasn't yeah, the place. Back in the day, I travel with my bong everywhere, dog. <laughs> You're not a roller? You don't roll? I do. I'm rolling a Grava spliff right now. I'm like, mm. but uh, but I don't, I still hit the bong too. But I, I hit, I used to really be like, not leave the house without it. Like I bring the, I would go to like Alchemist Studio and bring the bong every now and then. Should go to like my friend's house. It was just always in my like the early day, like back in like like around Reloaded Air or so. Like early days, I would really be like with the bong bag. Like every time I left the house, wherever I went. Did anyone roast you for having it? Not really. No one roasted me for it. But you know what? At the time, also, my man Chuck Strangers was doing the Shout same out thing. Chuck Strangers. Yeah, my man. So my man Chuck used to he used to hit the mole though, like like mix it with tobacco. 
and mm-hmm. weed and hit it out mm-hmm. the bong. Fucking crazy, right? <laughs> I, I I saw so, so many girls in would, college black out have, on that shit. Yo, like me off too. the my moles, home, and they're just yo like, the mole. Yeah, like um, my homegirl went to college in Santa Cruz, and she was doing that when she came back from college. I was like, yo, you're crazy. That's wild. But yeah, he would have a, a bag too. He would be over at Al's with his bong too. But no one so, roasted you for it. I get roasted for I think, carrying mine. Around. I mean, I mean, I'm sure you do because it's 2023. This is like 2014, 2015. <laughs> <laughs> and I got the big one. <laughs> Dude, mine the... was much bigger than that. Really? Yeah, <laughs> I got like the 18 inch. My shit is like a weapon, dog. This shit is so the glass on it's so thick. And he had the Illadelf, which was like, you know, the crazy, crazy bong that was like, and this shit, yo, his shit. I think one time he told me he dropped it in his kitchen and the shit bounced off the floor and he caught it. That's how thick. That's that's how thick. Nah, it's the real. (laughs) That's the real Illadelf. If you got the real. I don't know what the millimeter is, but it but those shits really don't break, dog. You got the funky fucking monkey D Luffy bong. <laughs> shit just bouncing around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my shit would really do some damage. For sure. I don't smoke tobacco, so I smoke just joints. And then I was like, but just joints okay. is kind of boring. So that's when I finally got this bong. I never smoked bongs my entire life. Oh, so the bong is relatively new to you? Relic, yeah, that's why I like how long have you been hitting the bong? Less than six months. Oh, wow, that's insane. I, grew I just up was a no, nah, I was a paper roller and then a bowl, I guess. But I feel you. I used to roll just like straight fucking pure joints with like a crutch. And I don't know, hanging out with so many guys from Flatbush and my man Chuck, like. I just started rolling grava spliffs and, and my shit's ain't as spicy and like hot as their shits, but it just like ended up being like I'm like, this is really fire and tastes really fucking good. Like you don't so care I, about the tobacco aspect of it. I, I probably should, but like no. Yeah, when like, everyone and, smokes. And also blunt. I don't use that much. Like I get a container like this. And it's filled, and it lasts me like a month, and like that's also with people coming over and like rolling their own spliffs and like give people some. So I I barely put like a little splash. I mean, I'm not trying to excuse it. It's probably like not great for me, but I don't no, know. No, and this I, isn't like I, me I, trying to give you a health lesson. I just whenever I see people smoking like backwoods and stuff, I don't think they understand that that's like the same. Oh, I've smoking. done that damage of that for my. Dude, believe me, I grew up fucking here in L.A. smoking Swisher Sweets and Garcia Vegas and like high school and shit. <laughs> like, it was like smoking a fucking UPS bag every day. You ever get caught? Like you ever get in trouble with weed? Yeah. Fuck yeah! Unfortunately, but. Yeah, I did in 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 high school. I got like a a felony for some shit. We oh and, really? It, yeah, it kind of fucking it's trash because I try. I like now I'm touring with rock and shit. They fucking denied me for global entry. I'm trying to fight that shit. I'm like, dog. I was four. I was like back four, in high school. Yeah, I was like, I'm like, I'm 14 years old, motherfuckers. Like, you can't. That shit's so crazy. I know. So the the chick the chick at the office was like, "You can appeal it, and most likely, if you write a good letter, you can't you you'll get it." So mm-hmm. I don't know. I just didn't get around to it. But... Isn't it crazy but... how things that you do when you're younger can affect you so much later in life? And like, no people it tell you, happens, but you don't. But when it happens, it sucks. Like you, you don't know? think it happens. I mean, it's not the worst. It's not like I can't travel or anything, but. It's just like little shit, like getting in and out of customs fast, and like fucking not have to take my laptop out and all this bullshit, you know. And it's like you don't see the through from, lines, huh? You don't see the through lines from when you were a kid to when you are now. Like, wow, the little decisions you made made led to who you are at this point. I mean, yeah, but you know, I don't know. I had some bunch of shit happen when I was in. Like, I went to. High school in Mexico for like two years, like fucking fucked up boarding school and shit. Like, I don't know. I've had like a wild ride, I guess. Why was it fucked up? 
Oh, because the Mexican staff would just kick the shit out of you. <laughs> and like, it was just a wild place. Like, it was like, it was meant to be like a nice place, like to get your kids like out of trouble or whatever. But like, all the staff was fucked up. So it was like, they would like slam you or like rub your chin in the asphalt or like just do some fucked up shit. Like, so it was like, it wasn't what it appeared to be. But were you sent there like as like a troubled teen, quote unquote? I I was sent there so I didn't have to go to court for my fucking mm. legal legal issue I had at the time. And so like my family and peer in court like you know said like hey like we he's over here now so he's not in the country so you can't and then the judge was just like okay well then he has to stay there until and figure it out and uh, yeah and so I did that but it seemed to be like an, it was supposed to be like some nice alternative but um it wasn't that nice <laughs> Well, yeah, it's like how prison's supposed to rehabilitate, but that shit's just making you more. Maybe, dangerous. yeah, I mean, you know, like that. That's, that's more like. You... Yeah, I know what you mean, but that's like more like. This was like a place where they like made it look like, you know, they're gonna have fun and meet kids and fucking like you know all these activities and shit. And it was like, no, like they literally aren't allowed to speak English. You can't go to the bathroom by yourself. You can't stand up by yourself. You have to stand, be with like a group of kids like all the time. They be get in trouble. They like send you to do all this like crazy physical like activities that like basically like brutal like pain, torturous like fucking like things that were not good for you or good for your yeah. body. And then they they fucking you know they would do wild shit to you like and you can't like call home and be like, yo, this, you know, 40-year-old Mexicans jump me. They, like, don't let you use the phone. You can't use, look at the TV. You can't, you know, write a letter. They black it out a letter, your letter when you write home. So it was like, it was a wild place. Like, I mean, How long can, were you there for? Like 22 months. What? Not without going home? Mm-hmm. Well, towards the end, I went home twice. For like once for like a week, and once for like I think maybe two weeks, maybe like another week or like something like that. But that was towards the end. I'd already been there for like you know f at least fifteen months, probably more, seventeen months. I'm sorry, bro. Wow, I'm don't sorry that happened to you. <laughs> That's what people say. It's like it's all good. I mean, I I kind of got past it. I still I'm. You know, I was crazy as I was like at this DJ Mugs event, and one of the kids I was with down there just like walked by me, and I recognized him. And it was like small world, but he was there with you. He was like at I was at Mugs's like release for that movie he just put out, and like this kid I like was there with, and I was cool with him too because there were some whack kids there, but there were also some cool kids. It just depended on like who you. I don't know. You couldn't really mix with kids, but certain kids got put into your group or whatever. And I was just like randomly bumped into this kid at, like that I was with down there like fucking so long ago. I was like random as fuck. But I mean, I met some, you know, I, still one of my best homies is still, um, I still talk to him from there. What happened? How did you get out? Like, what happened to that place? Is it still around? Like the the, the federalities like raided it and like shut it down, dude. And like they Yo, shut down the entire crazy. program. What happened was there was a facility that that company owned in Jamaica, and they like killed a kid there. They like forced him to swim, and the kid drowned. And so like then the whole like they went after the entire program of like there was one in Samoa, there was one in Jamaica, there was one in Mexico, and then they had like the easy ones that were like in like Utah or whatever. Um, these were like they should Mormon have like group. support group. They're Mormon. Yeah, they were like a Mormon group of people, but they would like hire like whoever in the country. So they would hire like Samoan people or Mexican people or Jamaican people. You know what I mean? And then they really wouldn't would let the those people kind of go wild. Like I seen a kid that I was down there with, and he was on what's it called, Doctor Phil. 
That's so crazy. That they beat the shit out of him and all this shit, and they fucked him up. And he was kind of like, that's the thing about that place. Like, if you stood up for yourself, you could be all right. But if you were, like, a little, like, not confident and you're kind of, like, a little wiener, like, the fucking staff is going to, like, pick on you even harder. It sounds like prison. <laughs> it sounds yeah, like yeah. you are in jail. Kind of. Kind of. Like... Do you have PTSD or like do you have like does it probably get you do. sometimes? I probably I probably do. I probably mm-hmm. do. Like in some way. Like I felt like I never really like got accustomed to like coming back to like like it was almost like an institutionalized like mentality when I came back. And I never yeah. sort of found myself like felt like normal back in society. Because I was just like, I came back and everyone was like, oh, I've got high school prom and this and that. I'm like, I don't know nothing about that shit. Like, I'm like, yo, you want to talk about my shit? The shit was crazy down there. And so it's just like, I don't know. I never felt like I related to a lot of people's like high school stories. So it it was weird like getting back into like the flow of things here. Like it was hard to like socialize or like work with people and shit i think that's a lot like also i'd already planned on doing beats and shit when i was down there i was like telling my homie like he, he'll even say to this day he's like bro you were talking about doing beats when you got out da, 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 da. and like and so when i got out it was just like hard like i felt like i just had to do music shit because i was like i can't really do other shit like i felt like just strange being groups of people or like just it just didn't I don't know my life felt no nah, I feel you when you realize what life can actually be like when you face with what the like the when the facade's gone then you kind of are like well I'm gonna I have to take myself seriously because nothing's real right like does that make sense yeah. do you get mm-hmm. that like mm-hmm. you're like oh none of this is real so I'm just gonna live how I want fuck you fuck everything else yeah I mean yeah. I know what you mean. It was just like, yeah, I couldn't really do other stuff. I mean, I had some, you know, I worked in some studios, did some other music stuff. It was like, I don't know. It was hard for me to get along with everyone. It was like, I've made, it's kind of weird. It's funny because even though being like that, I feel like that's how my whole music shit unfolded. It's like, I really just work with my friends. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I never, like, was, I mean, I've been, forced into work environments where it's a bunch of people that I don't know and you get to know them and whatever, whatever. But I didn't really do well at that. So it's like with the music shit, it's like I always feel like I can do this because I can socialize with my friends while doing it. So it makes it easier for me. And I think that is part of probably my PTSD from being down there is like, you know, just being in sort of like, you know, feeling like like I, I belong somewhere. You know what I mean? Well, once you trust someone fully, you want to stick mm-hmm. with them. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I also yeah. don't think people realize that, like, the 10,000 hour rule can come in hand with two people. Like, if you're working with someone, it's almost like you're building double XP together. It's um, like you're growing maybe. I together. I never thought about that, but maybe. Could be true. I don't know. Never really thought about that. Don't but, you think you and the people you work with, like Marcy and Kai, you sound good together because you have a lot of time under your belt? Yeah, but like even with rock, like I don't necessarily work like I'll make beats at home and just send them. It's not like mm, you don't work you know, in studio together. Not it's kind of like rare. It's probably already prepared if he go does that. Like it's probably mm-hmm. like the beats already done. It's just not like making it. Although, like maybe like right before the, when they were working on Elephant Man's Bones, like I was, a couple times I went over to Rock Script and just made beats on the fly. Like just went over and chilled and made beats like had his script, and that was like different. I've never really did that, so I was like, it was funny because I made some fire shit, and then they were working on their shit, and he was like, "Yo, like." You know, Moss been pulling up, making shit like here. Like you should do the same thing. I think Al went over there like once or twice too. Which so your muse random. comes from a place of um, 
secluding yourself? Like you like to be by yourself to find your muse. Not necessarily. It's like people can be here like chilling and socializing like in my place and I can just do this and talk and, and go into something. It can just be random. Like I'll just get a random inspiration. I'm just like, hey, I want to make a beat. You know, I'm not mm-hmm. I kind of have like a little like ADD. So it's like kind of it doesn't happen in like a good like 15, 20 minutes. Then I kind of just go do something else and then maybe come back. Yeah, um, but I don't know. But then there are times where I'm just like digging and digging and compiling samples, and just then, I, then I'm like maybe build a whole, you know, lot of shit, and then know that I have a bunch of samples to go to. And then when I sit down, I'm like, all right, let me go through these things that I heard, and maybe I can make something from these, and it usually works out. I've been in this really weird. <laughs> headspace where i know i work creatively because my add like i work the same way you do but i want to give myself more routine because i feel like i'll create more if i give myself routine but then i feel like i lose the essence of what my creativity actually is yeah i can see what you mean um you know what i don't know the more i do it the more it easy it comes to me but like I don't know. I, but yeah, I mean, I spent a lot of time, you know, maybe like 10 years ago, I would try to make beats all day and I'd just be getting frustrated and be like, this isn't coming out the way I want it or like, uh, this beat's like, okay. I'm also very picky with like, what, like, if I don't feel like it's fire, I'm not going to save it. I don't really like to make it. I might just experiment and then be like, this ain't, you know, but like, I'm very picky with my shit and like, what I like. What I act, what actually, what I actually make and go in the computer and goes into the computer is like, you know, it's got to be like a certain level to me to even get into the computer. Like, how do um, you know something's fire? I don't know. It's just a feeling. If I just the taste, it's just like I feel like mm, this is something. Like this does something for me. I feel something, and then it's a you know. Not everyone will agree, or maybe it also I'm like feeling like it's fire, but it's also fire for like maybe not for someone, and it's fire for someone else. You know what I mean? This episode is sponsored by Infused Productions. They are the best in cannabis products and events. Make sure to follow them online at Infused Productions. That's I N F U Z E D Productions, and check out what they have going on. Let's get back into it. Like, so I'm mm-hmm. kind of like, it's almost like, I don't know, DJing for, you know, it's like, all right, you read the room and you got the, you know, it's like, I know what this person likes. This person probably would like this beat. Boom. All right. Like I can make a beat and be like, hmm, this don't really sound like something, you know, rock would want or something. You know what I mean? So then it's like, but it's fire, but different kind of fire. So then I'm like, okay, who, would you know, what could this work with or whatever? But, Are you a um, trap fan? Trap? Yeah. Like that oh, type no. of rap. Not not really. I'm not like a hater or it's just like I don't really play much trap like that. Like not mm-hmm. like mm. Cause me, it's like for me, it's always production first. It's hard for me. Like if someone's rapping their ass off and it's amazing and the beat sucks, it's still hard for me to listen. You know? I'm like kind of gonna be like you know, I respect it and shit, but I'm like, you mean I'm so if I don't take the beat? <laughs> Sorry, I don't take the beat. I'm just kind of like, yeah, you know, and that ain't really my mode. So I'm not like, you know, I love that it exists and stuff. You got to have all that, but you know, I don't like sit and listen to trap beats. That's trap, funny trap because song. I. That's why I think a lot of people don't like Wes's new album is because they don't listen to that music normally. Like I listen to that a lot. Like that dude, Miguel, the plug who produced right. a lot of it. He used to produce for this dude, NGYL, who's like a rapper I've been listening to for years. Like I love his shit already. So it made uh-huh. me appreciate the beats more, right. but I, a lot right. of people have never really heard that shit. So to them, it's like, what the fuck right. is this? Right. I feel like he's pretty smart, you know. He's I mean, he's obviously a smart guy, but like um 
but I feel like him doing that was probably it seems like it's more working than not working, even though I know some people might not, you know, there's maybe only a few beats for like those kinds of fans that like the rap beats or whatever. But like a lot of people just caught on to him also. You know, they hear him on like a Travis Scott record, they hear him on like some other newer shit. And then he does that, and then it's like all these people are like, yes, we've been waiting for him to do this stuff, you know? So it's kind of like, you know, but, you know. Uh, what did you think about it? I mean, honestly, I listened to it once all the way through, and, I mean, I think he's just being smart about, you know, how to run his shit, and he, he definitely... um he's doing a good job at what, it, you know, what he's doing there. So, I mean, the trap beats, you know, it's not my type of thing, but I'm not like, I'm not going to be like, yo, this is, you know, terrible. We should, you know, or whatever, like this, it's, it seems like a natural progression for what he's trying to do and establish himself in all realms. So it's not really a big surprise. And also it's like, I don't know. He's done all the other stuff. So it's probably like, you know, pretty smart of him and it's probably a good thing, you know. And I, I think agree. it's doing I think it's also doing well. It's doing super well, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, that guy came in and he did his thing. So I mean and it's not like he can't just like come back with another rap record if he wanted to with a bunch of beats mm -hmm. and get everyone on it and do the same. Like he could totally do that too. So it's not, you know. Do you think people have like a knee or do people need to give what the fans want or should people just follow what they want fully? Um, I don't know. It's just, I guess it depends on the artist. It's like, you know, um, but I mean, I guess you should follow the artist and what they want to do and what they see fit. But you just, you know, as a fan, I'm sure you just hope that they're always making stuff that you actually like. But I mean, yeah. I guess to some degree, it's like people get tired of certain beats or certain, you know, I mean, I don't know. You know, it's, it's a weird thing. But mm -hmm. I, I, also, I hope you don't mind me asking you about the like more philosophical questions about it, because I know you're also in it, so you don't want to say the wrong thing but i do i this is things i'd like to think about you know rock will have you have a lot of joints that are like yes you you know as a fan you're gonna you know and but then they'll throw in the weird ones and a little unexpected you know and that's mm -hmm. cool too you know to have something a little different you know um so i like i like that you know i like yeah you know, it's good to have that, but I don't know. Fans can be, fans are obviously great and we all need fans, but they also demand a lot or say things like we, you know, I don't really like care for when someone's like, I need an album with you and da da da. It's like, you need like, dude, like, like I don't tell people what I need like that. Like, it's like, you know, don't, you know, that's like going to make me not want to do that. Like, you tell me you yeah, what are the like what are the no nos of messaging you? What should people not message you? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but saying they need saying they need something. Like I need another album with you and Ka. Like, yeah, I get just say you would like another one. Don't that you want like don't mm. tell me you need your shit. You know, like, yeah. Or like or people like with this shit I'm working on with rock, like drop the album, drop it. Just drop it. And it's like, dude, we have to like make it and shit. <laughs> like, yo, why you tell like you act like we just sit here and are just ready for it to go. Like also you need marketing plans and strategy and like, you know, it's like it's not as simple as just like, you know, people it's it's all good because it's like they don't understand how the stuff works, you know, the inner workings of like having like an actual rollout plan or like a someone's on a label. And they have a whole schedule and of like when it's coming. So it's like people don't really understand that side of it, which I guess you can't fault them for. But it's a little, it gets a little annoying when someone's like, you know, just drop it. And it's like, dude, like, 
And then they'll get mad there's, if it's there's like a lot not of verses finished. that need to be written. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's like hooks. You got to do, you know, your little movie samples and drops, and then you got to mix it and then get it mastered and all sorts. Of, so it's so like a lot. It's a longer process. People think you can just like you know drop the album. It's like dog. That shit takes like a long time unless someone's just rushing out an album. But we don't really rush these, you know. No. And that's what cra- is crazy is because you you and the people you work with are people that you know don't rush their work. So if you're a fan of them anyway, if like I'm a fan of you, I know you don't rush your work. Why would I push you to rush your work? Because that's I know that that's not your style. Well, like, I don't know. Just like even today, I put a picture and do like, yo, drop the album already. I'm like, oh, we like still got to record it. I can do all this shit. Like, can can I finish making it first, or like, why are you telling you know, telling me to? How was your me? How was your trip to New York? Man, it was fucking insane, fantastic. You know, Just a lot of shit going on. You know, it's good to see Ka do that pop up, and the amount of people that came was crazy. You know, the last one he did was when we did our record, the Orpheus record, and. And that was fire. It was pretty. It was pretty lit, you know, for what it was then, you know, before all this. And to see the difference from then to now was like, I mean, it looked literally like a supreme line. Like it was down a long ass block and curved around the corner, and then more people around the corner. Like, so it was like a good. I was so happy to see that for him, just for like music in general, to see the people like actually like are there, you know, and like supporting his shit like that in like a strong way. And then people saying like, yo, I flew here. I drove from Philly. I came from, I flew from California. I, you know, people came to New York just to do that. Like that's, that's pretty insane. So. It was dope running into him on the street the other day when I was with Thousand Words. That was like the most random. He told shit me that. Ever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw him. <laughs> you know, he was up there too. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the. But man we were just walking. But he's the type of artist that did it his own way and didn't do it the way that everyone thinks you should. Ka. Yeah. Yeah, and it's working out well. I mean, this is you know the thing is is like the I think like the way. Our music is is like I mean I, I guess like me and a lot of my friends it's like we all took like sort of a long road building it, but it's all kind of happening now. So maybe we didn't like you know rush to the finish line, but we still made it, and now it's like kind of even better being like the way that it is now. You know, like even rock like with this whole. Uh, you know, doing the partnership with um, equity and shit. So, you know, years ago, this wasn't possible. You know, they wouldn't be interested in music like this. You know, if Rock didn't come out with Marsburg and be like, you know, I think Sean Price sort of set the stage for all this, this scene. You know, especially, you know, even when Marsburg came out and they did the snow remix with him, that gave Rock like a he'll tell you this himself, like that that gave him a whole boost from the Sean Price uh, remix. And so like maybe from some what Sean Price but you know, like that kind of a fan base. It wasn't really there. You know, you couldn't just come into the and just be like, Oh, lit and underground. That that shit took a long time to build. You know, they really built a whole like genre almost. Well, yeah. what like parable were you taught most as a kid? Like the one I remember most is the tortoise versus the hare. Yeah, exactly. That would be basically. But it's so crazy. It's like it's like bumper stickers. You know, you see bumper stickers and you're like, that shit's so dumb. But the the actual meaning behind it is real. Like the actual right. like, right, if you right. just keep going, like if you put a smile, like all those right. whatever those dumb sayings are, they really. I are know true. it's like literally. I was thinking. I'm like, I was like, I was like, even like the pictures we're taking. I'm like, I want like in my head. I'm like, I wanted to tell people like, yo, like. 
follow your dreams. But then I'm like, that's so corny for me to say. I can't say that. But it's like, for real, just like, you really do just have to keep doing your shit. And then, you know, you see Ka, he kept doing his shit. Rock never switched up. He kept doing his shit. And like, look at him now. It's like, that shit pays off. You keep, you stick to your shit. You don't switch up. You, you know, it works. You might not always be, you might not always get all the, the glory to like later, you know? Yeah. But, what do you think but, changed? How do you, why do you think you can now do, why do, why can you guys now go into a label and get your deal? Like what changed? I mean, building, I think just building this, them realizing that damn, people actually fuck with this. This isn't just like, it's like, it's underground, but it's like the highest level of underground. You know, where it's like, mm -hmm. okay, this is more than just like, you know, a few record sales. There's clearly like, like what is underground years. anymore? You know what I mean? When they say like, no, I, I totally, but that's like, there's no mainstream anymore. Like who's, there's no mainstream rappers. Right. I mean, of course there are, because people got major deals. So it's like, it is mainstream when you have like a corporate, like a major label pushing your shit and they just put it in people's faces because they're paying for the, you know. So it's like, not to say that it's the best thing, but they're, they're still made, you know, major labels. So it's still commercial music. But, um, but Are I you think, think for the long you... term. Huh? You think in for the long term? Like, I don't think they'll last. Like, I think. I don't think they'll last. But the thing is about them is they can rotate new guys in and out all the time. And then it's like, it's not about longevity with that. It's, I mean, in my eyes, it's more about like, okay, this guy's not lit anymore. We got another kid that can do. And look, he got a following too. And do, 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 do. we can put some money in there. And then boom, if his shit don't work. Then we go to the next. You know, they can turn them, you know, turn them around fast. So it's. It's a different sort of a way. I don't really, you know, I'm also, I don't really even know what's going on in that world all the time. You know, like I don't follow. Like, I think the most I used to follow is like my shit was busted in my car for like my old car for a while. Like where I would just listen to the radio and I knew every radio song and like the <laughs> words and all the, all the beats and the hits. And I had no idea who made these songs. And then I would be like, then I would see someone like, they'd be like, I'd be in a car with someone else or go out somewhere. And I like, the people would look at me and be like, how do you know the words to this? Like, what the fuck? You like, like, they're just like, you're like, you make these for rock. You're like some like, like, you know, you listen to other shit. How the fuck do you know this beat? And this is like all these raps and I'm, and I have no idea who made it. And then they'll say like, you know, like so-and-so song. And I'm like, Oh, that's who that is? I was like, oh, okay. You know, I'd always be just, I was like, I felt like I was so connected. It was kind of fire to be connected. I call them like them. grocery store songs. Like when you're in a grocery store and you're like, I have no idea what this song is, but I know every word to it. Like I know every right. word is this right, song right, 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 right. that's playing no, right literally. now, but I couldn't give you anything about it. It was kind of great. I mean, it was, it was kind of great to like know the stuff that I'm like, not really on my own. I'm not playing. It's just kind of forced on me, but it's kind. Of, it was kind of cool to have a, a pulse on that. Uh, when you start even, feeling like a normal person, you're like, I might, I might work a nine to five and get the family in the picket fence and listen to the pop music. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then I, you know, now I got, I can just hook up my Bluetooth and I'm just, uh, I have no idea what's going on out there. <laughs> Bluetooth, not safe. Yeah, but it's not in my head either. <laughs> they used to tell me, yeah, don't fall asleep like with your phone near your head. Yeah, because remember back in the day, you would like, put, like if you had a studio and you had a speaker, right? You'd take your cell phone, you put it near the speaker or on top of the speaker, and then someone would call you and the speaker would go, and get all crazy. <laughs> like that shit's definitely happening to your brain. Yeah, are funny. you uh are you a conspiracy guy like are you do you read into um, i wouldn't say i am i had like my younger days where i was definitely like up on you know 
What was yours? What was your what was your field of study? What was your main conspiracy? I don't know about field of study, but you know, like all the zeitgeist stuff and all the banking shit and fucking mm -hmm. um you know like where they had those what was the one where they had the they had the world trade shit or the twin um the twin tower shit they had the um banking system and then they had a third part which was like religion in the sun i think it was one of the zeitgeist or something and like you know that was like early days and then like alien stuff you know I mean, yeah. me and Rob used to go in on all that stuff. And uh, it's cool. I mean, it's dope. I like that stuff. But it, also, I'm like, I'm not going to get caught up in it and make my life about it. To be like, you know, because some people, I've seen people get so caught up that it's just like. Oh, you can get lost in that. Yeah. yeah people like, get lost in and that. And then it's like, and then it like, they, you know, it'll like ruin their mood or like. You know, it's like, I get it that that stuff may, you know, it exists. Some certain things exist. And like, but what am I going to do about it? Oh, I can, I'm just going to sit here and make beats and shit and smoke weed or whatever. Like, yeah, I'm not, it's not like I can fucking, I'm going to take the Illuminati down. I'm like, what am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> you should. You like, should this isn't like national, the movie, like National Treasure or some shit. You know? <laughs> gonna 24. Go fucking, You're just I'm going to go find a fucking map and go dig through fucking weird chambers underneath Washington, D.C. or something. It's like psychedelics. People who go too far off the edge and that. Usually they go right, hand right, in hand. Right. The two and usually. I, I do go. that too, but yeah. Absolutely. I do it too. Yeah. I like love those fungus food. drinks the homie makes, you know? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. The yeah, no, those are... They taste so fucking good. It's like, and they get like, you rocked. Yeah. I think it's like 0.8 in each drink. Yeah. So it's like a healthy... It's more than a microdose, for sure. I have a, I've taken them so many times, but I have such a low tolerance. Yeah. 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 I feel it. I was eating you know a what? lot of mushrooms. Oh, were you? Yeah, I was hitting the DMT vape a lot too. Oh, can we have that conversation? Because I've done that. A, I've done that a few times. Oh man, I think I was like addicted to that shit. They say it's not addictive, but like I was smoking that shit so much, it kind of stopped work. Like it would take so much for me to blast off that I was just kind of like. I was like, all right, I'm abusing this shit now. So I just like stopped. I don't think I've smoked it in like a year or more. Even then, I just hit it like a couple, few times. And then, but like, really, I was going hard on that shit. Cause I really, once, once I did it, I was like, I blasted off so crazy. And then, and then after that, I was like, damn, I gotta like figure this out. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> like, so I just kept going back and going and just, and then I would have people over. I'd be like, yo, you want to try this? You want to try this? You want to try this? Because it's kind of, it is a, a crazy perspective on everything. Where you're just like, what the hell is going on here? Like, this is like, I've never seen these things. I didn't even know my mind could create these, like, things and what I'm seeing with my eyes closed and shit. Like, and so I was like, what I were the craziest keep... visuals you got? Man, it's so like, I didn't see people or faces or like fucking whatever they say, giant elves or whatever. It was mainly just like abstract patterns, but also they would kind of be able to like move as water and shit. You know, it was like you'd see like a pattern and it could like waterfall, but you can't really like focus on anything. Cause once you focus, try to look at something, it's like, then it's doing all sorts of other shit. I've been brought to different dimensions. Like I've been to different places. Like I've I'm seen sure. like the real visual. I was, so I, was, I was hitting the vape though. I didn't hit mm. the real DMT. So I was like, probably took it as far as you can with the vape, like the, the vaporizing yeah. for not the real. I'm sure if I hit the real shit, then I, I would be saying a whole bunch of different shit. The second but time also, I did it, they told me, don't come back too often. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to be doing this too much. I believe that. Because also, like, when I did the DMT vape and I was doing that a lot, I was like, 
you know, mm-hmm. thinking about doing the whole the real shit. But then I'm like, man, maybe I shouldn't even be. I should just wait till I die to see all this shit. Like, I don't no. really need to be tampering with it. Like, I had a like even I would do that shit with Rock, right? And he would be like. Man, like he's like, I would be like, yo, my homie's got the real shit. You just want to like get it, and he's like, I think I'm. He'd be like, I'm think I'm good with the eight. Like it's like, this enough, and I've seen enough to know that, you know, we don't really think, need to push that fast further. Yeah, I think for people listening who want to try it who never have, do know that once you do it, it is a decision that you can't go back on. It is like pulling the right. veil back a little bit. Right, like, right, right. You and I think I got some... enough of a glimpse to be like, okay, there's a lot of stuff going on out here that I don't understand. And I'm ready. I'm I'm cool with just clarifying that, like, uh, wrapping that up in a neat little package at the end of my life versus, like, <laughs> right now, you know? I'll I agree. The, I'll keep the surprise for later. And that's, I, like, the the vape was, like, that's, like, way more casual than... I mean, it's still very intense, but like from I've done full shaman know, ceremonies. I know about that, like like ayahuasca stuff. I have a friend; she's an actor. But I've done a full DMT that, ceremony like, with a shaman. Okay. And everything. Fire. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have an actress friend that like fucking went down to like I forget where she was, Costa Rica or something, where they have a whole ayahuasca two week like retreat and shit. And go through that's the so whole, would you do whole, that like, you wouldn't do the real the whole real purge like the real deal you know you wouldn't do that and i'm i would think about it i don't know it's quite some dedication but uh i would think about it i don't know i don't i'm i'm not in a rush to do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that shit seems too much yeah <laughs> that shit seems too much yeah. But you didn't you never saw anything. Like you were never brought to anywhere. Nah, not really. It was mainly just like Did you ever insane, any, have any just lasting like, ideas, like lasting beliefs that stuck with you? Not necessarily. I mean, honestly, I should have recorded some of the things I and conversations I had after. Cause I definitely had some like super insightful things, but it's kind of like a dream, you know. Where it's like, if you don't write it down in detail right after, the longer you go, the hazier and hazier it gets. And, you know, you know, I feel you. So. It's funny. I kind of, I know, not I know when somewhat, like, I know what I'm going to, like, I liked your music, but I feel like I would have got, like, I knew I was going to get along with you as a person and that we had, we'd like <laughs> the bog, the DFT. I was like, oh shit, we're of a similar mindset, even though I don't okay, like we're... music. I could tell it from your music. We're vibing now. You know what's funny is like right after I hit DMT for the first time, I did, I made that Ra- Molly Ringwald beat for rock. And it's like really? the second, it's the first song on what's it called? Uh, Marcy Lago. And like I put this like sound in it that's like some like, it's not like a laser sound, but it's some like fucking kind of like weird. It's like a soul record. So, but it has this like, strange sort of sound that like pans a bit and like and like i kind of was like this is like the dmt sound like this is like that was what i was going for i'm like that's what i thought when i heard that beat i was like this is psychedelic and crazy right so like i felt that with the sample and then i was like nah but i need there's like this part that like I don't know, like, and so it was like a almost like a lasery sounding like kind of thing that just, and that was like right after I hit the DMT pen. And did like, he hit it was, writing it? No, but maybe. I mean, he recorded that at home, so I don't know when he recorded mm. it. But I made the beat like with that, and I didn't. And I'm the first time I made it was with that sound in it. I didn't add that later. That was like. But he was the one that like brought the pen over and was like, "You need to hit the." <laughs> <laughs> and then I was hitting it, and I was like, "And he was like, you're not really hitting that." He's like, <laughs> "He's like, he's like, if you can talk to me and like you still know you're here, you didn't really hit it." 
And I was like, all right, all right. So then I hit it some more. And then I was looking, like I had my eyes open and I had this like console underneath my TV that was wood. And all of a sudden that shit like started like there were like some ancient sort of like hieroglyphic language like was like forming like it was like carved into the wood on the console and like and i was looking around and then all the walls started having this sort of like i don't know like egyptian sumerian type looking sort of shit and so i started being like whoa this is like and he was like, nah, he was like, hit that shit so you can't hit it anymore. And I just kept hitting it. I must have hit that. I hit it like so many times, like at least eight, nine times, like really big back to back to back till I was just like on the couch, like, like laid out and like, and it was just like, I was down for probably like 10 minutes. And he was like, yo, he's like, it's all good, bro. You're right here. I'm chilling. Like, blah, blah, blah. Cause like sometimes in those if you need someone to be like tell you, like, yo, it's all good. Cause you're like starting to breathe and like maybe like hyperventilate a bit, like it's a little overwhelming. And well, you uh, you like, you go to a place that you've never been before, but you know, I mean, but you seems literally familiar. like almost accept death. Like, yeah. To, like, when I explain you know I mean? it to people who haven't done it and like how I came out after it, I do explain it's like, yeah, it's like a near death experience. Like you come yeah, out like, like you had a you near to, death experience. It's definitely a point where you have to be like, don't fight it. Just let go. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like uh, you're the gonna last make time this I did harder on yourself in, by fighting it. Like, yeah. The last know. time I did it was in Nashville. <clears throat> like uh two months ago. I had a ceremony in Nashville. That's um, great. The ceremony but, must be insane. I'm like a baby compared to you because I only did. I've only see, but what is a shaman other than someone who went too hard for too long? You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like that's Mm -hmm. basically what it is. But in Nashville, I was brought to like Mount Olympus, and honestly, it was crazy. I was like brought to this marble staircase. Like I've been to the, but it does seem like a dream. But I like remember it really well. Right. It's pretty, yeah. It's some intense stuff going on there, you know. But it helped help me with my depression. Hmm. I could see that. That should help me a, a bit, a bit. I would say with that, like it, it gave me a newfound sense of purpose. I could see that. It's de- I mean, a brush with death will definitely like have you back. Like, all right, <laughs> you know what I mean. Do you deal with like, that ever? Anxiety, depression. Of course, yeah, a lot. Isn't it funny you say, "Of course"? <laughs> I mean, it's a normal thing, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah. But I go, I I go to a therapist, so that's that's been probably the most helpful. Is like, a, I go to therapy every week. It's been beneficial to you. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. It's tough. I think. This is going to sound like an excuse, but I'm saying that so I know that I'm calling it an excuse for myself. Being a comedian, I don't take many things seriously. And I take right. my mental health very seriously. But I do think if I started talking to someone, I'd just start running bits on them. And when I have gone to therapy in the past, it's just me trying to write, like me trying to get him to laugh. Oh, uh, okay. I so definitely if- make my therapist laugh. <laughs> I think you have to like. Would you already stand up? Me, no, nah, probably not. That's probably not my my calling right there. But not to say that I wouldn't. I don't know. I feel like I could make some funny shit. Like if we came up with ideas and stuff, we was like, I could come up with some funny stuff. You know, we joke. You know, me and my friends joke around a lot. So it's like our whole, and I have friends that, you know, dabble in comedy too. Um, I have a friend that tries to do stand up, or he's done a few, but, you know, he's really into stand up and stuff like that. Who's the funniest rapper to you? Like with bars or like actual like personality wise? I'll say knowing. I'll, I'll make it a two part question. 
Uh, funniest? I don't know. Axe pretty funny. Um, like rap wise, you know, with bars, it'll have me like you know. Rock has some funny shit here and there too. Rock um, does have some funny ass shit. Yeah, he does. He lets it. You know, he'll say some shit, and you know, like this shit. This shit yeah, like, he'll make it. He'll get me laughing. But yeah, I remember he he, he so sent me a beat once, and it was called Jewish fart. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, this is hilarious. I think it's like one of the beats on like Rosebud One, <laughs> with originally titled "Jewish Fart." <laughs> Wait, which track? Do you know? I don't it? remember. I can't remember, dog. That's hilarious. I think it's probably an Israeli sample or something. Oh my god! I uh, I was performing at Drumwork Fest. Um, what was that in August? They had like a comedy show for okay. Conway's festival and right. I was having a really good set and I got real cocky and I decided to do the joke about the movie the boy I have a joke about the movie the boy in the striped pajamas and I decided do you know what that movie is no nah, I don't it's just a real sad holocaust movie I'm not even Jewish but you're it's Jewish an, it's an older movie thing. uh it's an older book but it probably came out 2000 or something and I did a joke to it. The whole theater booed me. Oh, wow. Damn. <laughs> I got too cocky with it. Yeah, the whole theater booed. Fuck it. Sometimes you need that, huh? <laughs> yeah. See, all that shit I find funny. Can you bomb in music? Like, are there bombs in music? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean... I guess you can, but it's not the same as getting booed off stage. Like, I didn't get booed off stage. I stuck. Whatever. I mean, not on. You it. know, not maybe <laughs> no, not off no, stage, no. but getting no, booed at a I show. Know. I've never yeah. really seen anyone booed at a rap show. Maybe I'm sure there is some. Maybe for for a short set or something. I feel like someone might boo, but like, yeah, I don't know. It'd be crazy if they put on like a unanimously like hated song and they try to play it and everyone's just like boo <laughs> like i've never seen that happen but you know what's the funniest though to finish your question that you wouldn't oh, yeah. know like outside of rapping is ka ka is one of the mm. funniest people i know he's literally hilarious and he's like and you would not kind of think that from his music it's like you know but like he's actually really one of the funniest guys and I think honestly, his music him is and so Rock serious. Together, it makes him and sense. Rock together, clowning around like here, are us all three of us just like chilling, joking around. We have mad fun, especially like with my buddy Chuck too. It's like we're all like, even Alchemist. Alchemist is mad funny too. You ever see Chappelle's always... Block Party? I haven't seen that actually. I watched his stand ups. I watched his stand ups. Like all of them, but I'm I haven't I don't think I ever watched Block Park. Do you know what it is? He like put on a show, right? It's, it's like a like, festival. It's a it's rap festival. and comedy festival, and he right. made a documentary about it. And right, it was like right, my dad's yeah. favorite. It was my dad's favorite movie growing up. So I think that kind of like birthed who I am: the rap and comedy love. But I, it's like Chappelle goes. Rappers and comedians are very similar, like minded people. And it's just very fun. That. I could believe that. I know. I you know, I definitely could see that. What was your introduction into the music world? Like, what was your when I like, like, like you actual, you came like, back, like you industry came industry, or like my actual background with like music. Like you came back from Mexico wanting to be serious about it. When did you become serious about it? After that, I mean, I got a drum machine, like. A little after that so i got an xl and i would just make beats and i would do stuff with my friends and i don't know if i was really serious about it at that point you know it was like i was just doing it and i enjoyed doing it but i never was like i need to make a career out of it i don't know i was just doing it like i didn't really have a plan or anything and then um and also, I never felt like I was good back then, which I wasn't. You know what I mean? No one's good in the beginning, you know? Yeah. Um, but but then we, we put out a record 
which I don't know, some people still like, I don't really like, like it, but there were like glimpses of things, you know, but, um, but I think, I guess I got more serious as I started, like when I was, I was, me and my friends were all rock fans, like in like 2005, six, you know, four to that, you know, and it was just like listening to like the UN and like, which was like this group that Pete Rock put on Pete Stramento's album. And I'm like, who's this guy? This guy's ill, this group. And then they had an album that like was out called like You Enter You Out. And it was Rock's group. And his verses, and he was producing a lot of it too. And I was like, yo, this shit is fire. This dude's really ill. But like, once I got up with him, I was, and he started like, you know, what's up with some beats and da, da, da. like, and as time went on, I was like, I guess I just got more serious about it. I don't know. Why do you think so, you guys got along? Um, I don't know why. We just always been kind of homies and cool. And I mean, it's been a long time, but, um, I don't know. Maybe I mean, we was always just cool and kicking it. And then he spent a lot of time in LA with me here, and um, you know, working on Reloaded. Like he did a lot of it not here, and then he did a lot of and then a good finishing pieces and stuff here in LA. Um, I don't know. We were just kicking it, watching movies and watching Entourage all the time, and you know, watching movies and chilling and smoking and making shit you'd be recording some stuff for reloaded i'd be making beats and give him some new shit i made and i don't know we just got along like that and then i don't know over the years we just kept in touch and kept you know like i'm working on an album like send me some stuff so and then it just happened that every album he did since then like i basically had a beat on like every album at least like except for mount marcy was the only one is that crazy to go back to when you were like a younger and a fan of him to think about that now? Yeah, because even like I was saying, my, my homies and I put out an album way back in the day and it was like whatever, it wasn't really that good. But like um, we um, like I didn't know rock. So like I would have my buddy uh, memory, my DJ friend scratch like this dude rock for like all these hooks for songs from like his features on like the UN album and shit like that so it's like I didn't know how to reach him or how to work with him at the time but I was like we should just scratch this guy's voice on this shit so it was like kind of like he was like and it was insane because it was like all, it was like bad songs on that shit that had his voice scratched and uh and so it was like, in a way, he was like featured on the shit, like without being like, without me knowing him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Has he so ever heard it? When, back in the day, we like, I like showed it to him, me and my friends, and I could tell he was like, not impressed. He's <laughs> 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 like, okay, you're scratching my voice. Like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> And then now I think about it, it's like I, I'm embarrassed, Steve. Like I would never be like want to talk. I don't even like talking about that shit. So. Is that why you don't like it? Well, it's not like I don't like those. One that era of my life wasn't that great. I wasn't super happy. I was like, I didn't know I was drinking a lot, or doing drugs. I was just like, it wasn't a good era. So it was like, and also I was like. At least if I was doing all that, the music could be good. But I didn't really like the beats. Like, I wasn't there yet. You know what I mean? I wasn't mm -hmm. fully there. Like, I was like, and I also knew, I was like, I can do better than this. I just don't, like, I don't know. I wanted to do better than that. So it was like, I was still learning how to get better. When so did you like, become good? You know, it's like anything else. Like, you know, you like, you're making stuff, but you know, you still have to do more work to get to where you, like, where you feel like that's the thing also is you got to put out like people have to put music out like i used to be like scared to push it out or something 
like in the beginning i feel like the, for, in the beginning i feel like the hardest part for people is to like put music out and just let go and put it out there and the more you do it the easier it is to just like all right let's go put it up put it out it's like you know in the beginning you know there's a lot of cases of guys i know like oh I haven't put anything out. I'm still like working on my album. And it's like, dog, it's been 10 years. Like just put something out. It's just so you have it out. So it's like you have to get that one piece out just so you have it out. Like so you understand I, what it's like to put something out there. I know? feel that way with podcasts. And I don't mean mm -hmm. to, to change subjects, but I hope someone listening will hear this and take this correctly. Is if you want to start a podcast, it doesn't matter the quality of it. We're talking on Zoom right now. I'm sitting on my porch with fucking Frankenstein behind me, smoking my bong. Like, it doesn't matter. Just do it. Just put it out. Like, you're the one holding you back in anything. Exactly. Like, exactly. That's how I feel. Because it's like, uh, I've heard too many cases of guys like, yeah, I made all these beats. I don't know. They're not ready yet. I'm not putting it out. It's like, I have a homie, my buddy Fresh. He's like literally one of my best friends. And he has, he makes amazing beats and he just, I don't know, he doesn't have much stuff out. You know, I don't even know how you'd find it if it, he just doesn't. It's not like, I mean, he ain't like the prime example of like what I'm saying, but like, you know, he's also giving beats to Rock and like back in the day and Rock was like, oh, this shit's fire. You know, so I'm like, I know he knows he makes fire. And every now and then I'm encouraged him to get like Chuck a beat. I think Chuck had some beats from him once and like, um, but like, you know. It'd be cool to get even my homie like to get him some placements on some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, like just getting out there. I don't know. It's a good thing. I have homies that just do music, and you gotta realize that shit's all in your head till you like put it out, let people hear it. So it's in other people's heads, not just yours. <laughs> well, like you know? I hate my podcast. Like when I go back and listen to it, I really don't like listening to what I do. But then I look at how many people listen to it, and it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, I have a, a lot of people, like, last month alone, I got millions of listens, which is crazy to me. Cause it's, but it's just mm -hmm. like, I just put it out. Even if I don't like it, I just put it out. Because that's kind of yeah. what you're supposed to do. That's It's not for you to decide what other people are going to like. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you it's know, for them like right to now. Decide. We're just sitting. We're just sitting here talking about whatever, like a regular conversation of some two guys that smoke DNT and smoke bongs. But <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> someone's gonna be like, "Wow, this is fire!" <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's what my whole. That's what my whole shtick is. I don't ask like I don't have prepared questions. I don't have right, anything. Right. No, I just cool. I like, I like the, the winging it aspect. That's cool. When did you realize you were good? I don't know. I still don't know if I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't ever say that about myself because I'm always like every beat I do. Sometimes it's like I'm trying to do something better, and that was my, always my thing. I just want to do something better, but like, but now I do find it like I'll do something that impresses myself, and then I'm like, damn, how am I gonna do something that's like as good as this? Which is kind of like a newer problem for me, which I didn't always have that problem. And like oh, so, that's like where top, I feel like topping I'm, yourself off. Pause. Yeah, it's like competing <laughs> with myself. On, I'm like I'm. I've noticed I'm like I compete with myself on a way more <laughs> frequent basis. Don't talk yourself, than pause. Yeah, no. Yeah, pause. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do know what you mean. I do it. You have to be your harshest critic, and you have to want yeah. to compete with yourself. Or you're just gonna stay stagnant. It's funny doing an album too, because it's like you do like. I don't know. On this album, I'm going so hard. So it's like you do one. I'm like, how am I gonna finish this shit? This shit is gonna. It's quite a task to like outdo myself on all these. But yeah, we uh, didn't even so talk hard. about your album at all. <laughs> We're like an hour fifteen yeah. into this interview. We didn't talk about your album. I oh, apologize. <laughs> no, it's cool. There's not much to talk about. I'm just doing stuff. You know. When's it dropping? I don't know. There's okay, no, cool. You know, All right, good. No time. Turn off my no head. time soon. No <laughs> Turn time off soon. My head. <laughs> there'll be and other stuff that, there'll be other stuff that comes out before, you know? So it's like mm -hmm. not like it's not like that's like it's not even in like I wouldn't even say the near future. Like when's we're the talking next, like dropping we're talking you? next year, like middle of the year, 
third quarter or something. You know, Damn. I'm not you're not talking about like anytime soon. Just like, what's the next thing dropping for you? Um, I mean, you'll probably see something with me and him that's like not like a full thing, but that I'm contributing. You know, something like that probably. Um, stuff with my buddy Chuck. Um, I don't know. I have some you mean Chuck Strangers, here. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's also, coming I on the. I hope he said he's coming on the podcast soon. I hope he comes mm-hmm. on the podcast soon. I'm sure he will. Get him to hit the bong. That'd be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I will. We'll have a bong off. I think his bong is here. He doesn't even have one of them. I'll bring mine. I'm gonna I almost didn't shirt. buy mine because it's called Big Mom. I was like, that's the worst name for a bong I've ever heard. You should just slap a sticker over that. I, you're right. I never thought about that. You're right. I did that on mine. You want to see my bong? Yeah, I do. Check it out. How do I check? Okay. This is my bong. It's kind of dirty right now. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I have that same uh, Animos uh, Dodgers sticker. Oh, yeah? How'd you get that? Uh, fucking Theravada. Shout out. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> shout, shout him out. Yes, sir. But anyway. Yeah, me, and him, me and him got some stuff in the tuck. I tap on my <laughs> That's a dope-ass fridge. I tap on my fridge and it, like, turns the light on. I appreciate your time. I know I'm taking up your whole, uh, your whole... Getting no, I'm back chilling, from New I'm, York. I'm chilling. I'm just drinking a couple of beers and smoking. So it's all good with me. I wish I brought a drink out here with me. My mouth is dry as hell. I got these vinyls right here. So like... Ooh. The woeful. Yo, those are the language. I got the... I got a test. He gave me a test press. Damn. For the or- this is a test press for Orpheus. Are you going to frame those and, up? And I got and I, and so I got myself two copies. What am I going to frame up? Uh, you, should frame a, you should frame up uh, your vinyls. Like whatever you have out, you should put up in frames. Yeah, I have a few up right now. I'll show you. I keep a few up. This is probably all I'm gonna do though. Like I got like Marcy Lago. I got um this poster from we just we did this show in Portugal. Oh, um, that's a few, hard. A few months ago. So I that's that. hard. And then I got like reloaded and uh Orpheus. Yeah, all right. So you already have them up. And I got uh Behold the Dark Horse. And then I got a whole section of things that I, either people gave me or things I did things on. Like, like I'd say... I had this, you just scared me is, so much with that soda on the vinyls, bro. You just gave me a heart attack. It's not over. But yeah, this is crazy. Oh, that is crazy. Rosebud. Rosebud 2. Empire. Fly Are you a fan shit. of Citizen Kane? The movie? Yeah. Of course. You know it's really fire? Of course. I love the movie. Is um check this out. I think they're here. Yeah, they should. This is one. This is the um single for this uh song I did with Navy and um, yeah, seen like the four, crazy. Four five for it, and it folds out and says, so Yo, crazy. that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I actually bought these. I need to like actually hit that dude up and be like, Give me a few more. <laughs> <that was weird. laughs> like, yeah, <I'm... laughs> but that's how it always is. Yeah, I just need to like make sure I got it. You know, sometimes it's like you miss it. I did that. Yeah, I'm on. I mean, I don't make music, but it's I'm on a Conway vinyl, and then I'm on the SD NAC Vidon vinyl. And for both those, oh, I had to buy a few copies just to be like, just to have them up, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes you just got to lock it in, because 
sometimes you never know. They're like, I didn't get enough copies. I don't have a car. I ran out. It's like, yeah, you know, it's all good. But just certain yeah. ones, it's like, I'm not going to let myself miss out on certain. Man, thank you for doing this. I really do appreciate yeah, yeah, your time. I know we're gonna link up in person sometime, but I wanted to uh I wanted to have you on the podcast because I'm a big fan. Oh man, pleasure, dude. My I don't even pleasure. know how to I never know how to end these things. I don't plugs, people already know who you are. People want to find you, they know. Do you have anything I, to plug? I hope so. Nah, Do you have anything you want to plug? Nah, I don't know. Just I don't know. Follow my shit. <laughs> <laughs> follow his shit and hit subscribe on Bucked Up yeah. Smoke Box. Check check my YouTube. I think what did I put out? I think I put out a video from like our tour. Um. Yeah, we edited some video of like the not this last tour, but the tour before. Um. But yeah, I don't know. Check just follow my Twitter or Instagram if you want to be tapped in with whatever whatever is coming. You know. I don't yeah, know. we got a lot of surprises coming, so it's like, but there will be a, a me and Rock will have a full thing. Just don't, you know, I don't know when it's coming, but just don't tell you on. you I'm need doing, it. Don't message yeah, yeah. that you need it. Just don't bother <laughs> so, me about it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I, um, I'm pretty much like doing. I'm kind of like it's kind of a difference. Uh, the difference with this is that I've kind of just been compiling beats, so it's like I'm almost have the luxury of like mapping out somewhat of like a record before we even like kind of like get to the recording because i feel like most of the records i'm involved in it's like you you know you send someone a beat they do a couple and it's like all right then a couple more and then just keep adding and adding and and like but there's vocals being recorded versus this where it's like i'm literally just like doing it without vocals and just like how I see it, like just like scoring it before he even like touches it. And then I was That's like, hard, like a movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then I'm like putting like movie samples and skits and things in it even before. And I was like, I hit him up. I was like, yo, are you like digging what I'm doing with all these? Are you digging this? Like with all these like skits and intros and little shit. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, don't. He's like, That's fire. It gives me more to like write about and like sets the tone like so it's kind of cool to you know he's working on so much other stuff that i can just kind of do this on my own have certain you know make it almost like it's almost like pre-made to some degree but, that's that's i can't wait to hear it no rush i'm on still it, working I can't on it. wait to hear it like yeah. i just we came back from tour and i already added like some crazy shit to it so it's like it's like a work in progress still kind of like but but like all of it i mean i think it's what people want it's like if you like the songs we have imagine those songs being like kind of better and then and then like on top of that it's like gonna be like 12 or 14 of them and like i'm really bringing like the strongest shit i've like ever made all over there so it's kind of like it's gonna be like a record of grails like, do you have an like, idea of who you want on it, or are you just gonna be you two? Uh nah, but like, not not really. I mean, you never know who could be popping <laughs> up, but um, but you know, most likely, you know, you'll see. I really, we're gonna get caught on it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I can't see us doing it. Like, I we didn't get him on the Orpheus record, which kind of sucked. That we didn't get like rock on the Orpheus record, so it's like for sure this like we would definitely have to get caught. Yeah, because you know, they they stuff. their collaborations are incredible. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you will see that. You know what I mean? So, um, that's awesome. I can't man. see it. I can't see that not happening. You know what I mean? That would be weird. Yeah, <laughs> that would be weird. You know. So, um, but yeah, you never know. We'll see. You know, now with this whole set up with like the way we're putting stuff out you know i don't know sky's the limit you know? congratulations man congratulations for real dude thanks man like i'm just happy to be here and you know be a part of this whole shit whatever it's about to come you know and to go on tour with this guy is like amazing you know i didn't yeah 
I'm not really a DJ. <laughs> so I'm just up there like, you know, and I, and I figured it out. Do you have any DJ moves? Do you have any like... No. <laughs> I got no moves. No, <laughs> no, I do. I play like a little beat set sometimes before the um, yeah. before the set. Like I'll go out there and play like some instrumentals. You know, I'll play like a song or two off Orpheus. I'll play maybe a song I got with you know Chuck or one of my friends that's not out. Play some unreleased shit. Play a couple beats you ain't heard. You know, and so I'll do. I'll bust out little tricks doing like shit like that. Like and some little transitions or whatever, but like, I'm not like, I feel like for me, it's more about me just being there and playing music than some fancy DJ set, you know, but I also, I want to get better at that. So, you know, that's my new, new thing. Well, and when you come to the Northeast, I'm going to be there. Yeah, that'd be dope. Definitely. If you ever come to Boston or anything like that, you got to let me know. We were supposed to at one point. We probably have to make it up at some point. I don't know. but um, yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys were supposed to come to the Paradise. I was going to go to that. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, shit. I'm sure eventually we'll probably have to go back there. Yeah. I'm going to be yeah. with him for, like, everything. So That's dope, know, man. Unless it's Al, then, you know, then it'll be an alchemist, you know, and him. But. Other than that, you'll see me with him. So catch me and rock in your city whenever. You know? All right, man. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah,